In this video, I'm going to show you my dust collection system. I've been using it for over a year now, and I absolutely love it. It's actually my second system. My first system was poorly designed, inefficient, and it was difficult to use. This one gives me dust collection at each tool. It's really easy to use, uh, and having a good dust collection system in your workshop just makes it a much more enjoyable experience. Uh, I went out and bought this off of Craigslist. It's a pretty high volume uh, dust collector. Got a pretty good deal on it. After I bought it, I decided to play it smart, and I let it sit in my garage for about six weeks while I thought about the shortcomings of my first system. And I watched tons of videos on other people's dust collection systems, and I was able to collect quite a few good ideas before designing and building this, what you're seeing here. Hopefully, after watching this video, you can also draw from some of the great ideas that I got, and this will allow you to design and build your own system and hopefully do it right the first time. All right, so let's start with the uh, dust collector unit itself. Obviously, I converted it to two-stage. I decided to do that just because it's much more efficient. Um, but also, in, uh, I decided to mount it to the wall. Uh, and in doing so, I'm able to get away with a much smaller footprint. Uh, there's other designs out there where they're on wheels and it's all one contained unit. Uh, and I just thought it was a much better idea to mount it to the wall um, because of the fact that it saves a lot of space. So there's a lot, I'll, you know, this is not a build video, so I'll post uh, links on the, you know, the, the videos I found most helpful for converting it to a two-stage, but it's really easy to do. You get a lot more efficiency, and with this design, you save space as well. So now I'm able to put my um, bandsaw right here. It's even smaller than my old setup, which was a, a total piece of junk, anemic piece of junk. It, it's super easy to empty, too. A lot easier than, than taking off and putting back this bag. All I do is unattach it here and here and just roll it out to the trash can and, and uh, empty it. So I chose to go with the Super Dust Deputy. There's other cyclones out there that I'm sure work just as well. In order to fit this to the PVC piping, and by the way, I use sewer PVC piping, not standard PVC piping. Standard is thicker. It's much more expensive. You don't need the thick... Uh, uh, you can get away with the thinner, cheaper um, sewer PVC. So anyways, I, this is a air duct reducer that I got at Home Depot. It's a 5 inch to 4 inch no crimp reducer. Fits snugly over the uh, uh, 5 inch outlet of the uh, Super Dust Deputy. And then this fits snugly into the PVC elbow here. And it is a, I got this at Woodcraft, it's a quick connect, 4 inch threaded uh, splice quick connect and it fits super snugly in here with almost no air leak uh, and then on the top here this is a six inch um, inlet and what I found after lots of trial and error that works perfectly with this and the six inch flexible uh, air duct tube is a six inch PVC coupling now this is a regular six inch PVC coupling I did have to put a little bit of duct tape around there as a gasket to make it fit but anyway super easy to empty super easy to convert it to a two-stage and when you convert it to a two-stage you never lose efficiency by getting your filter clogged up you can see I got a little bit of dust in here this is after a year and a half of very frequent use and the only reason that this is in here is because one day I was playing a bunch of boards and I let this get filled up to here when I noticed that I realized my mistake and went and emptied it. So that's after a year and a half of use. So moving on to the ducting, I already touched on the fact that you want to use the sewer PVC. Other thing you want to do is you want to avoid 90 degree turns. Try and keep it short as possible. Use the biggest pipe you can. All the uh, pipe on the, uh, the top is dry fitted, uh, except for the drop downs. I had to glue those. Thinking about it, I actually wish I would have screwed them in. Um, they're pretty airtight when, uh, and it allows me to expand you know, by having most of it dry fitted, I can uh, expand the system if I want to. Blast gates. The old system, I hated my blast gates. Watched a lot of videos on blast gates. This is the design I like the best, and I'd like to uh, show you these blast gates. So I have these attached by screws here. I'll take this one down and show you what I did. Uh, I'll post a link to the, uh, uh, the video that I found most helpful in building these, but I really like this design. It allows you to go from PVC size 
to regular standard dust collection size. What I did is I harvested the uh, old, um, the, uh, basically took apart the old blast gates I had in my old system purchased from Woodcraft, which were terrible because you'd get stuff clogged on this side. And that allows me to you know, go to the standard size for uh, dust collection tubing. And this is all glued in here with silicone glue. Seems to hold it really well. You can screw it too. What I really like about this is it's compact and it, it allows, it's got a feature here where uh, there's a flap of foil and there's cardboard here that allows this to never get clogged with dust like the, I was having problems with the old ones. These look a lot nicer, they're a lot beefier, but uh, watch how this closes when you gauge it. That works really well, it's never going to get clogged. The other thing that I want to point out that I really like about the system is micro switches are at each blast gate. And these are long ranger uh, multi-gate switch system that I purchased off of Amazon. It's really easy to install. It's a, a low voltage switch that installs right here when you open up the blast gate, turns it on. Close it. You may ask why would I want to go with something like this as opposed to a tool activated on off or a remote control switch. Well my old system had a remote control switch and the remote control switch has a habit of getting lost. But the major downfall to using remote controls is that you never know which blast gates are open or closed. Using this system, if your system's off, you know all the blast gates are closed. Turning on the blast gate at the tool you're using, you know that's the only blast gate on. It's very convenient. I highly recommend it. I have no regrets about ditching the remote control and going with this micro switch. So system. A couple tools in particular I'd like to point out the dust collection to is first off my drill press. This is a lousy drill press but dust collection on drill press is tough. I had the drill NATO before. Did not like it at all. Got this idea from one of the many videos out there on dust collection. This is called lock line. It's a flexible but retains its position two and a half inch hose. Same sort of blast gate. But basically position it right over your work. Does an excellent job, collects almost 100% of the dust. Highly recommend lock line for your drill press. But it's got an added bonus is that you can disconnect it. This just fits in there snugly. And I can walk over to my router. Now I've got cabinet dust collection on my router. And I got another line going up here to the fence, so I've got in-fence dust collection. Almost total dust collection on my router. But let's say I'm routing something where the, the fence is back uh, and the downdraft collection isn't enough. I can take this off and then this lock line fits in there. And I can position it right where I need it to go. Gives me excellent dust collection. One more tip on routers that I learned from uh, my research is uh, on your, your uh, router plate, I recommend if you've got cabinet dust collection, cut the back out, make it egg shaped so that it gives you more downdraft collection in the back because you really don't need the back for supporting your material. It just gives you more, more, uh, um, uh, more of a hole for downward dust collection. One of the things I really didn't like about my old system was that I had a hose running across the floor from my table saw. And this was a shared hose with other tools uh, along the wall here, so I'd have to reach down and plug and unplug this constantly, and I was constantly having to step over this hose. So my solution for that was to make a run of pipe along the ceiling. It comes down here, and it's out of the way uh, down these stairs, and now I just have a short run that I don't have to step over. The switch is a little further away from the table saw switch than I'd like, but it's still much more convenient than the setup I had. My old system had one feature that I really did like, so I kept it for this system. That was a long hose in the middle of my workshop that I use for my drum sander that I can easily unattach and attach to my shop vac vacuum and vacuum up my shop. It's really convenient. It's got a hose that's long enough to reach all four corners of the shop, so I kept it for this system. So if you're wondering what I do for my miter saw, well that's a separate system. I've had this for quite a while, I really like it. There's a tool activated dust collector that works also with my uh, handheld power tools here um, with a hose that runs underneath here that I can quickly connect to this hose and a boom, 
I made a separate video on that and I'll provide a link to it, but it works great for handheld power tools um, with the tool activated uh, on off of the dust collector. Really like that system. So check out that video. So in my experience, I've found that having even a lousy dust collection system is definitely better than nothing. Helps keep your workshop clean, uh, but having a great system that's easy to use makes your workshop just a much more enjoyable environment. Um, so basically get the best system that you can and set it up in a way that is easy to use at each tool. So whether you're watching this video to implement your first system or to upgrade your current system, I hope you found some ideas that were helpful. So thank you for watching and please post any constructive comments in the comments section.